I'll be presenting this evening about my recent art installation, The House Home Project. This installation was open to the public and about 70 people experienced it in May of this year. For many years, my work has involved a fascination with living space, others and my own. In the summer of 2011, I found myself compelled to turn my camera, camera inward into my own private space. I found through time and experience that I use the camera as a means to understand information, whether it be visual information or psychological information. This project evolved in stages. Up until this point, my work generally unfolded in a linear process. I would take photographs and I would print sets of work. This is how this project began, a simple making of two-dimensional imagery. At that time, I was thinking a lot about space and about the home space in particular. I was asking myself a lot of questions. How is our energy and mental state reflected in the feel and look of space? My research and thinking at the time had evolved to a consideration of perception in general. How do we see? How does what we see constantly change depending on the filters that we place on experience? How does light's movement metaphorically and physically reflect changing perception? The interplay between physical and sensory perception and emotional psychological perception became really interesting to me. Around this time, I grew to be dissatisfied with the images as individual prints. In a meeting, a mentor suggested that I live with the work, just simply hang it up as one would in a studio to gain perspective. I arrived home from that meeting and I started to wonder, what would happen if I installed the work of the house in the house itself? Not just as prints on the wall, but in a more site-specific way. How could I create a myriad of visual impressions of the house and perhaps even psychological impressions of the emotional experience of home using the photographs I'd taken over the last year? I started with my living room. I was going to be moving in May, so I just decided to pack up early and live in the house empty so that I could conceive more clearly of the project. I had photographed the window in the living room quite a bit, this one, in different lights, with different focus, and in all kinds of different mental states. I wanted the prints to be large enough to mirror the actual scale of the window. I started with this particular image out the window at dusk. To print the photograph to scale, I needed to fragment it into segments, as I don't have a printer wide enough to print that size. That fragmentation, however, ended up lending itself well to the project. As I viewed these broken up and repieced photographs, I found myself noticing something as I lived with them. As I looked at the work, I would oscillate between the whole and individual parts of the image itself because of the white space between the segments. As I considered how a photograph itself is a visual segment, this started to make sense. And so I placed the work within the living room and eventually all of the rooms of the house, which I gradually packed and emptied to create spaces that gave multiple viewpoints of the same location. I made prints of the way light had interacted with the house and installed the work in the same places where the light had touched that surface in the past and when the photograph was taken, kind of a visual memory of those moments expressed in light. I also considered the visual conversation possible between the rooms. How could one room relate to the next room? This is harder to see within the documentation, but the mapping of the space was quite intentional. I also considered making the familiar within the photograph even more abstracted, pulling components from the images and reworking those components into other forms, such as the vertical column of abstract images that you'll see shortly in the hallway. The photograph and its relationship to memory, specifically within the home space, was another consideration. I feel that fragments of memory are isolated and can be reimagined to create an ever-shifting view of reality. Meaning derived from either archive, whether it's the archive that we hold in our minds of memory or of imagery that's tangible is directly tied to the experience of the person perceiving it. A sensation can trigger a response or a connection to another thought, and those connections can be unexpected and varied. In the attic installation piece, which will be coming up shortly, I printed 160 images taken within the house over the span of the year. This piece considered the ways in which we rework our recollection, how the web of the mind is not a linear situation, and how connections we may continuously vary, interrelate, and evolve. All said, the photograph as a medium grew to gain even more significance to me as a tool as this project unfolded. The photograph uniquely abstracts information, and thus it creates a space into which we can project meaning based on our own experience. This is that piece um, uh, with 160 photographs. So as I considered these ideas further, I thought, what would happen if I turned the house itself into a camera? The house had been my subject, but what if I was a subject living within the camera itself? I've been doing some research at the time about the camera obscura. A camera obscura is simply a darkened box into which light projects to create an image. It's Latin for darkened chamber. I decided to turn two rooms of the house into a camera obscura. So late one evening, I blocked out all the light from the windows in one of the rooms. I then fit an aperture into one of the windows, just a piece of cardboard, which acted as a lens to focus the light from the outside. Since it was nighttime, I obviously couldn't see anything yet, and so I went to bed. 
The next morning, I woke up curious to see what had happened. Uh, I went to the room, I closed the door, and I sat on the floor. Slowly, my eyes began to adjust, and I could see my neighbor's house and the street uh, projected throughout the room. After years of studying and teaching photography, there was something really profound for me about the act of sitting inside of a camera. It was completely mesmerizing as an experience, and I was late to work that day. <laughs> the projection was ephemeral and soft. The longer you sit in the space, the more you see and you start to notice. As I lived with the room for a few weeks, I was continuously amazed by the changes of light and color. The night before I moved, I was still working on the installation. I decided that I wanted to convert a second room um, of the house. It's a great diversion from packing, moving boxes, a lot more fun. This second room faced my garden. It was late in the afternoon, and I repeated my process from the first room. Then something unexpected caught my attention in the middle of that process. That later afternoon light was particularly intense that day, and I could see the beam focused in a defined way throughout the aperture, through the aperture. The light refracted off of the particles in the air, and I could see the color spectrum in the dust. I captured this with video and was pretty amazed at the color present and how the light itself became almost tangible. It was pretty mesmerizing, one of those pleasant experiences that sometimes present within the working process. That stills from that video. In the final segment of the installation, I emptied out the basement, kind of last minute, and projected this video on the wall, considering the idea, again, of light moving through space. Across the way, I projected a still image of the camera obscura directly above the basement, so from that room that was above that spot. The darkened space became just another way in which to consider how the physical structure of the house and the emotional space of the home with all the expectations that we project into those spaces could be seen, experienced, and understood through images and light. <laughs>